All right, guys, today we've got something new. We have got a new multimeter and oscilloscope. Let me open this thing up and show it to you. Now, this is not an unboxing video. An unboxing video implies I have never opened it yet, and I have had this open, so this is not the way it's gonna look if you were to open it up yourself. So inside the box, there is a manual. That's always handy. Let's put it over here. There's a bag. If you wanna put it in a bag, there's a bag for it. And of course there are some leads and then there is the actual device itself. This is the Lumi LM2020 graphical multimeter. This is a multimeter and oscilloscope. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is taking the original LM2001 Lumi oscilloscope and multimeter and comparing the new version, the LM2020. For the purposes of our recording, I'm gonna call the old version, version 1.0. And that's because this was the original, as far as I'm aware of. Maybe it wasn't, but it's the first one that I had ever seen. And this version over here, I'm gonna call it version 3.0. And that's because in between these versions, there was another version in the middle, version 2.0, which I don't have, so I can't show you. Well, let's compare these things and see what the big differences are. The first big difference is obvious. They are in a different form factor. Version 1.0 is much larger and it's wider. It is a lot thicker. It's just in general, a larger device. On the back, version 1.0 has a stand and the batteries go in here. Version 2.0 is a little more compact on the back. There is a stand and the batteries are behind the stand inside a little box that you can pull out and put the batteries in. It came with batteries. I installed those batteries earlier. Now the next thing that jumps out at me that should jump out as you is the dial. Let's take a closer look here. As you can see, the dial selectors are a lot different. Version 1.0 has different ranges for all the various types of testing you can do with a multimeter. Plus all these display buttons up here. Now you have different ranges because this is not auto ranging. Version 2.0 is auto ranging. So that's a really big difference and an auto ranging multimeter is just a lot easier to use. The other big difference that I noticed right off the bat is right down here. Version 1.0 has a 20 amp fuse. Version 3.0 has a 10 amp fuse. So in between version 1.0 and 3.0, there was another model, version 2.0. Those aren't the official designations. That's just what I'm calling them. And the difference was that version 2.0 got rid of this form factor and switch to this form factor. So version 2.0 used a dark screen with a light colored text. The big difference being the main display on this version is this yellow color. I guess some people call it amber. So that's the difference between version 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. Now the display on both of them is a little bit problematic because as you can see, they are very reflective of the various lights that I have around the shop. Now, another thing about the form factor, the new one feels kind of heavy, feels very sturdy. The stand is nice and solid, and it just feels like it would hold up to being dropped a little bit better. It's a lot heavier. Version 3.0 is, well, it feels flimsy. The plastic feels thin and cheap and lightweight, and the stand just doesn't seem to perform properly. Now, the main reason why I have an oscilloscope is to set the gains on my amplifier. So I want to look at the oscilloscope feature. On version 1.0, to use the oscilloscope feature, you turn it to the voltage level that you're interested in. You have to hit the DC-AC button because music is AC voltage. And then you hit the display button and that gives you the oscilloscope function. The oscilloscope function will show the waveform on the screen. It will show the voltage and it will show the frequency. Version 3.0 is a little bit different. You turn it on by selecting voltage. So you switch it here to AC current. It'll say AC right there. 
and a V for voltage. Then to get into oscilloscope mode, you hold down the R button and it will switch to an oscilloscope. Now in oscilloscope mode, you're gonna see that there's a lot going on on that screen. Down here at the bottom, it says time, range, and trigger. What we're really interested in is the range function. So we can hit the F2 and that menu at the bottom changes to exit, X1 slash X3 and X10. So now we can hit the F3 button to zoom in and zoom out on our waveform when we're setting our gains. Now the other thing to remember about this meter, when you switch over to oscilloscope mode, it is no longer auto ranging. It goes into a manual ranging setup. So keep that in mind. So we hold the R button down and we switch back to regular voltage display. The screen is a lot smaller, so it might be hard to read, but it's also a lot higher contrast. So I already like this version better. I think it's gonna be easier to read and I think it's gonna be easier to film. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook these up to an amplifier and we're gonna get a good shot at what they look like in action. And hey, while I'm doing that, I wanna take a second to give a shout out to these guys right here. These are some of my patrons over on Patreon. These guys are helping me out with a financial contribution to the channel. If you find my content valuable, you can go to Patreon and you can sign up too. The links are down in the description. And hey, if you can't do that, you can hit that like button and let YouTube know that this is valuable content. We'll start off on AC voltage to see where we are. And we see that we're rocking 18.15 volts. Now this particular amplifier is designed to do 200 watts. I've got my amplifier bridged. We'll hold down the R button and we get a waveform. And what we're gonna notice is that our waveform looks to be squared off, but that's not squared off. It's just off of the screen. So what we need to do now is hit F2 and adjust our range by hitting F3 until it cycles to a point where we can see what we're doing. Let's go with this one. This one looks good to me. So over on the amplifier, got my handy screwdriver, just gonna simply turn the gain knob up so that you can see what clipping looks like on this scope. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm watching the voltage and I see that I'm up to 22 volts. So let's go up a little bit more. Everything's looking great. The waveform's not squared off. We're at 25 volts. And right about there, we start to see the waveform begin to look a little bit wonky. I'm at the top, at the top and the bottom of the wave, the waveform got kind of thick. So let's turn it up just a hair more and see what happens. And we see we get some distortion at the top and the bottom of the waves. And now we see that the top and the bottom of the wave has squared off, so this thing is clearly clipping. So let's back that down and let's back it down until all that kind of fuzz stops. And we are at 27.6 volts. And it appears that we have a good waveform with no fuzz on it, no clipping. Everything looks just fine. Now let's compare that to what we get with version 1.0. I'm gonna take version 1.0 and I'm gonna set it to 200 volts because I'm over 20, so that means I've got to sit at 200. Take my test leads. So we're reading 28.9 volts, and that little lightning bolt symbol you might be able to see there, it's on both of them. That's a safety warning to let you know that you're over 20 volts. Now what I want you to notice is you really can't see anything, and so we're gonna hit the select key a time or two and see if we can get this thing to cycle until we get a good view. That's what the select key is gonna do for you. The very tops and the bottom of these waveforms are slightly squared off, or they appear to be slightly squared off. So I'm going to grab the screwdriver. I'm going to turn it up and turn it down and just see what the waveform looks like. So let's turn this thing up until it clips. And we're clipping here. We got a nice, ugly square wave. Let's turn this thing down until that waveform starts to flatten out. And that looks like it's flattened out, but I can't tell for sure because it looks like there's a couple of little pixels at the top and the bottom of all those waves. And the waveform doesn't look particularly nice. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit more until we can get rid of those pixels at the top and the bottom of the wave. 
and we don't get rid of them. Those pixels at the top and the bottom are still there. And I turn it down even more, and guess what? Give it a second to catch up. They're still there. The wave still looks flat at the top and the bottom. Maybe if I hit the select button and try to get it to look a little different. Nothing. Maybe these up and down buttons do something. There we go, that gave me a better view. And again, you're gonna notice right at the very top, it's flat. So let's turn it down to get rid of that clipping. Well, the top is still flat. We'll turn it down some more. Give it a second to catch up. The top is still flat. So this thing really isn't very good for finding clipping and the new version is a whole lot better. Now it's time to answer the big question. Should you buy this oscilloscope? Well, the answer is probably not. If you've already got the older version, upgrading is only gonna give you a marginal improvement, not worth the money. And if you don't have one and you need an oscilloscope to set your gains, the answer is still no. Since the introduction of the original Lumi 2001 oscilloscope, the market has been flooded with copies. My advice is to buy the cheapest copy out there. And most importantly, you don't need an oscilloscope to set your gains. In this video right here, I show you how to do a little bit of math so you can use a multimeter to set your gains. If you wanna learn more about how to set up an amplifier, Try this playlist out right down here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next adventure.